just imagine that you are going to set up a kingdom and you have the freedom to choose who lives in that, uh, that country that you're going to establish. You have the pick of the people to put there. So what type of person would you have to go into your country? Maybe you'd have some farmers to produce some food. Maybe you'd have engineers to build roads and cars. Doctors, good idea, to help look after us. Uh, and maybe some security men on the borders to keep out the wrong types. Uh, and maybe even a, an army to uh, keep the peace. Whatever. I don't know what's on your list. But there is a list which uh, Jesus gives. And he chooses particularly meekness as a key quality to be in his country. Well, let's start a poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God, the, the poor in spirit, the, the humble. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom. Uh, and this humility, this humbleness, this meekness is a key quality. Uh, and then I reflect, why didn't I choose meekness in my qualities to be in my country? And I think it's because we focus on skills in our uh, in our culture <coughs> like, a, like a CV we see what people can do but God and Jesus are focusing on how things are done they're focusing on qualities of the person not on the skill set uh, and then our country does that to us doesn't it, our culture meekness is not valued in our culture there, there is no competition for the meekest man in the world. No nation is promoting and inspiring the next generation of meek people and in the Guinness Book of Records uh, there's no entry around meekness. But think about this quality of meekness. If somebody is meek they are more likely to be content with life and get on with things. They are more likely to accept the rulership and the laws and not rebel. And they're not so likely to be discontent with wages and their conditions. Uh, a meek person is somebody who will be content. And that's the sort of person we would like. So Jesus promotes the meek. And I'm going to start in Matthew 11 um, with a a well-known passage. Um, you don't need to turn, though it doesn't offend me if you don't turn, just uh, stick with the listening. Uh, but Matthew 11, uh, verse 25, is where we're going to start. <clears throat> Jesus had just uh, sent the disciples out preaching, previous chapter, and he's reflecting on uh, people's reaction to the gospel message and then he says in Matthew 11 verse 25 at that time Jesus said I praise you Father Lord of heaven and earth because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children and, and little children we'll, we'll come back to that title later yes Father for that was your good pleasure all things have been committed to me by my Father no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, verse 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come to me, Jesus says, to us. And he says what he's like. He is gentle and humble. The word gentle there is meek. And what you're coming across is the fact that our new versions have edited out the word meekness because we don't use that in our everyday English. Uh, but if you go back to the original, it's the word meek. Uh, and we need to promote what meekness is because uh, it's been 
weeded out of our vocabulary. Jesus is meek and humble in heart. And the word meek is linked to humility, it's linked to gentleness, it's that uh, quality of um, quiet spirit, the gentle behaviour. Now, <clears throat> Jesus wants people like that to be in his kingdom. Uh, and you may think that's fine, um, we can live with that. But it's more important than that. It's absolutely vital that we are meek if we are to be in uh, the kingdom of God. So I'm going to go back to Zephaniah chapter 3. Uh, and in the time of Zephaniah, uh, it was a time when Israel was uh, not very um, faithful and was about to be punished. And Zephaniah tells uh, Israel God's message on how to prepare for what's about to happen. And he makes some, uh, some statements which fit in with theme very well. Uh, Zephaniah 3, and we're going to go from verse 11. On that day you will not be put to shame for all the wrongs you have done to me, because I will remove from this city those who rejoice in their pride. Never again will you be haughty on my holy hill. But I will leave within you the meek and humble who trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel will do no wrong. They will speak no lies, nor will deceit be found in their mouths. They will eat and lie down, and no one will make them afraid. There's a northern army coming down, a dangerous situation, and God is saying he is going to root out the proud, the haughty, and those who are going to remain are the meek and humble. And, and so we have clarity here that the proud are going to be removed from the earth and the meek are going to reside in the earth. This is, this is not um, something that's unusual. This is a pattern that God's going to do again and again. If you go back to um, chapter 2, uh, Zephaniah gives some advice to the people with this invasion. What should they be doing in prepare, preparation? Should they be building up their armaments or, or what? So he says, chapter 2 verse 1, Gather together, gather together, O shameful nation, before the appointed time arrives and that day sweeps like chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's wrath comes upon you, seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what he commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility, perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's wrath. So there is a benefit for being meek, that being humble, being um, righteous, that they might be protected when the dark day of disaster comes. And ultimately, from the land of Israel, the proud will be left, will be gone. Only the meek will remain. And that's the pattern of uh, Matthew 5. The meek will be in God's kingdom, and it will be like that because the proud people will be removed. Okay, let's just build on that pattern Psalm 37 um, just repeats this pattern, this principle, which shows that meekness is not an optional quality. It's actually a, a vital quality if we are to remain in the land. So, Psalm 37, and it's going to take it from verse 9. For evil men, <coughs> excuse me, for evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land a little while and the wicked will be no more though you look for them they will not be found but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace and, and Christ took that didn't he blessed are the meek they inherit the earth Christ is taking that and uh, endorsing it the wicked will be no more the, the proud will be removed the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace there's, there's the two options aren't there and it, for us, we have to decide and prove that we are in the, hu the humble, the meek camp. God has to see us as meek people because we want to be in the kingdom. Now, <clears throat> meekness, okay? I've said uh, it's not a quality that's talked about in everyday language nowadays. But meekness is not weakness. <clears throat> to be quite clear. <clears throat> Meekness is not weakness, it's a position of trusting in God. In the book, uh, Fruits of 
the fruit of the spirit, Colin Ashby says that uh, meekness is controlled strength. Meekness is not weakness. So what are the features of meek people and um, so that we know how to develop that sort of quality? <coughs> and uh, I'll put a list together, you, you may or may not agree with it, but it, to me it defines some of the attitudes of a meek person. And I, I do this to help us uh, determine how to behave. A meek person is not aggressive. A meek person is not argumentative. He does not force his opinion on others. He actually abases himself. He doesn't mind doing those lowly jobs. He doesn't mind living in lowly places. He doesn't boast. He's not a harsh ruler. He doesn't punish harshly. He is gentle. He using the AV language, condescends to those of low estate, probably not associated with proud people or the rich, probably the one who would talk to the lowly. A meek person will not be critical of others. He will not be devious to get his own way. He will turn the other cheek. He will be a listener more than a talker a forgiver more than a fighter. Meekness is a mindset. It's a quality that God wants in his kingdom. Now, it's no surprise, uh, based on human nature, that the disciples had a problem with this quality. So we're going to look at Matthew 18 and uh, join a, an incident with the disciples uh, and then Christ reply his guidance uh, to his disciples and, and therefore his guidance to us. Matthew 18, uh, the reconciliation chapter, verse 1. <clears throat> At that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who is the greatest? Uh, that's not a, a meek sort of question, is it? Who is the greatest? Uh, meek people wouldn't uh, seek that greatness uh, and, and neither would they argue about it. So what did Jesus say? Verse 2. <clears throat> he called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus does give them the answer of who is the greatest is the one who humbles him most or becomes the least. Uh, and, and there's a direct relationship between being great in God's eyes uh, and being little in our own eyes. Uh, and Christ gives this image of a little child not just any child, a little child and he places this little child among them and you can just imagine um, these twelve I was going to say groups of disciples and Jesus uh, looking at this little child in the middle and this little child next to Jesus probably carrying away from the eyesight of these men uh, and maybe even holding on to the leg of Jesus perhaps you can picture that, uh, that scene because that's the answer to the question. If we can picture that humility, scene of humility, that's what we must be like. A little child in God's eyes. These little children are looked after by, by God. In verse 10 it says, See that you do not look down on one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. A little one, a little child of God has an angel who is in the presence of God. Now, you would think that that lesson was quite a visual, clear lesson <coughs> and the disciples would learn it. But next chapter, chapter 19, verse 13, it seems that this lesson was a problem. <coughs> 19, 13. 
Then little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. And Jesus says, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he placed his hands on them, he went on their way. Kingdom of heaven, the kingdom belongs to the humble. The kingdom belongs to the meek. And Jesus is reinforcing this message by a little child. And we need to uh, fight our pride by having that image of the little child. <coughs> Not easy. <coughs> I have to say, <coughs> when I uh, uh, did this exhortation, I find it quite humbling. And uh, I repeat this exhortation because I know it's good for me. But um, I think it generally helps, helps everybody. <coughs> I'd like now to flip to Luke chapter 18 for a parable. I'm trying to teach uh, God's view of the world, not man's view of the world. Remember, uh, modern society rejects meekness as a quality uh, and it's lost, it's almost lost from vocabulary. Luke 18 verse 9, it's a well-known parable. And you, <clears throat> you can think whether these people here are, are meek or not. I think it would be fairly obvious. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Uh, and there's a principle there, isn't there? Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Uh, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. That's a principle that goes through scripture. And it's clear what we must be. We must be humble if we want to be exalted. But if we exalt ourselves like the proud, we will be rooted out of the kingdom. It's, it's important as that. Now, humanly speaking, we want to exalt ourselves because that's unfortunately the way we're made and it's fortunately the way society directs us. A uh, natural man promotes himself, the big I am, but the spiritual man develops meekness we must seek to be meek so, so how do we do this it's not easy to suddenly become humble well certainly not but uh, I think in Colossians 3 verse 12 we have some guidance which um, helps us uh, to some extent with uh, what we must do Colossians 3 and verse 12 Bear in mind that the word gentleness here uh, means meekness in the original Greek. Colossians 3 verse 12. How do we do it? Therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience clothe yourselves and I think that's the, the key we have a choice just, just as you've made a choice this morning as to what you're going to wear to come to the meeting and you could have taken that you could have taken that we have a choice in how we behave we could behave like this or we could behave like that we could choose to fight back or not we could choose to boast or not we could take the best seat or the, the lowest seat. We could wash the feet or we could choose not to. Choices. It's how we want to behave. How do we want to behave? We must behave 
in a make fly because those are the things that those are the people that are going to be in God's kingdom it's important Ephesians backs this up and I'll, I'll follow through the original word just to make sure it's right um, <clears throat> Ephesians says 4.2 be completely humble and gentle meek be completely humble and gentle be patient bearing with one another in love make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace choice we choose our behaviour and uh, that displays what type of person we are <clears throat> James makes this point in, in James 3 verse 13 who is wise and understanding among you let him show it by his good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom humility, meekness that comes from wisdom in other words James is saying if you're wise you are going to be meek uh, and so uh, let us be wise and be meek now this subject of meekness um, surprised me because uh, it realised, I realised that this is a quality that's particularly important in certain situations um, it's, it's part of a toolkit we should have that we bring out I in particularly important moments <coughs> and one of them is 1 Peter 3.15 which uh, talks about meekness and uh, perhaps it's a surprising uh, place to find it 1 Peter 3.15 <coughs> but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you in to give a re the reason of the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Gentleness, that's the word meekness. When we preach, we should preach meekly. So we shouldn't be standing uh, at the top saying, oh, I know better than you and behaving, talking in an arrogant way we should be talking and preaching in a meek way it's interesting isn't it not something I've seen before and look how old I am uh, 2 Timothy 2 <coughs> verse uh, 23 is another occasion where meekness is a, a desirable quality in fact a very important quality uh, 2 Timothy 2 23 don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because they, you know they produce quarrels and the Lord's servant must not quarrel instead he must be kind to everybody able to teach, not resentful those who oppose him he must gently, meekly instruct in other words when there's an argument, a debate, a disagreement within the community or with somebody outside meekness is what we need in marshalling that discussion uh, and finally uh, another time, important time to, to show meekness well now Galatians 6 1 <coughs> it says brothers if someone is caught in a sin you who are spiritual should restore him gently meekly so if somebody's lost a lost sheep and you're trying to get them to come back You've got to use meekness in the way, the way we do it. So why this? Why do we need to be meek when we're preaching, when we're uh, discussing? I was going to say arguing, but that would be a non-meek way of words. So while we're discussing with somebody uh, and winning people back. I think you know the answer, don't you? That if somebody who is meek comes to your door and says, Brother, you've done this, uh, can we talk about it? Uh, and that brother says, look, you know, um, thus and so, and it's, well, I'm here to help, you know, and, and does it in a meek way, we're more likely to listen, <coughs> but if somebody's on the doorstep saying, brother, you've done wrong, and, and this is the scripture, and you must, you must amend your ways, um, then an, an arrogant, condescending, harsh attitude is not going to win, is it? It's just not going to work. We know that. But somebody who is... Um, meek, humble, uh, conciliatory, uh, helpful that person uh, will make some progress with God's, God's will 
So meekness is a quality that we should be displaying in the way we communicate in particularly difficult circumstances. Uh, and it's showing to the people with, who are listening to us that the Word of God has made an effect on us, that we are meek because of the Word inside. James tells us uh, another quality of meekness we need. Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you That's meekly. So when we're listening to the word of God we shouldn't be thinking well I know it already or I understand or I'm so, uh, so wise. We should be thinking well um, what's God teaching me here? I- I'm here to learn. I, I-, I want to grow. Meekness. Uh, and when we read scripture we must be meek. And so now, now come back to where we started. Who's going to be in our country? Who's going to be in God's country? It is a meek person. We, we can see the wisdom now of uh, this quality of meekness. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the kingdom. Jesus was a meek person. He said so himself as a quality that he aspired to and also displayed. But it, it was more than that, wasn't it? Far, far more than we, we can think. When he came into Jerusalem, he uh, didn't choose a, uh, a proud approach. He chose a humble approach and, and so fulfilled prophecy. We know that he, he came in riding a donkey. The words from Matthew. Say to the daughter of Zion, See your king comes to you, gentle. That's the word meek. That is the word meek. Meek and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He humbly accepted, he meekly accepted the word of God. He showed his wisdom by putting it into practice and he, he displayed it by uh, taking on that meek position, the washing the feet, uh, the serving his brother and sister uh, and going to the cross. He was, uh, as we read, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Jesus was a lion but he behaved like a lamb he humbled himself so he would be exalted he could have had ten legions of angels at his command but he submitted and so we're going to uh, come to the bread and wine shortly and I'm going to close with a passage from Philippians about Jesus <clears throat> and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He humbled himself to the cross, took the lowest place, and therefore, uh, according to the principle that God's established, those who humble themselves are exalted. He was exalted to the highest place. And uh, through his work, we too can be exalted uh, and share the kingdom with him.